In this video, I show you how to rebuild the Kodak 2383 LUT as a Resolve Power Grade. So this is the LUT we're going to rebuild. It's the Kodak 2383 LUT included with Resolve. And this is the LUT rebuilt as a Power Grade. For context, here is the same image with the standard Alexa Rec 709 transform. This power grade isn't actually just built for the Alexa, it should work with most cameras. And to give you an idea of what it can do, here is some footage I've graded using some or all of the components of the power grade. So you might be wondering, why would you rebuild a LUT already included with Resolve? The short answer is customization. A power grade version of this LUT gives you complete control over every single element. You are able to adjust and switch on and off individual nodes based on what look you are after. And if something isn't working in the grade, it's super easy to make adjustments to individual elements, something that isn't possible with a LUT. This video will be broken down into two sections. First I'll show you the process I use to recreate this LUT, then I'll show you how I use it. You can follow along or you can download the completed power grade from my store. I say store, but the power grade is actually available for free. Or you can contribute what you like, but if you can't afford anything, just take it and don't feel bad about it. So this is the final node graph. It took around an hour and a half for the initial build, at which point I started using it on real projects. I continued tweaking for another four or five hours, and this is where I ended up. The first thing we'll take a look at is rebuilding the main curve. This is the LUT applied. In the first node, I've got a transform that converts the Alexa color space into Rec 709. I'm going to desaturate prior to the LUT, so we are left with just the grayscale curve. A film emulation based on profile data is actually quite complex. By removing the saturation, we remove some of that complexity. Next I'll switch over to an image that has smoother gradations, that way it's easier to see what we're doing. Then I grab a still so I can use it as a reference. Now I'll remove the LUT from the end so we can start rebuilding our curve. I prefer to work with editable splines as I find it's easier to get a smooth curve. Now it's just a matter of pushing and pulling the endpoints till we match our reference image. And this looks close enough for now. Next we'll tackle the colour tint. So this is a program called Lattice. It allows you to view and manipulate LUTs. Here I've loaded the Kodak 2383 LUT. One of the features of Lattice is that it allows you to see the RGB curves that make up the LUT. We can clearly see the tints present throughout the entire luminance range. But notice that the curves converge at around the midpoint, indicating that there's no tint. In the shadows, the blue cast is quite clear, whilst the highlights push warmer. Since we've already built our main curve that gives us our contrast, there's no reason for these curves to follow the same S shape. So the only thing that we need to model is their deviation away from the main contrast curve. This will all make more sense in a second. So we'll create a node after the main curve and drop the gain down to 50%. This lowers the sensitivity of the curves, giving you more precision. So looking at the curves in Lattice again, shows us that red sits the lowest, followed by green. And in the highlights, green sits the highest, followed by red. And since we're only drawing the offset, we can actually get away with just drawing the red and green curves. When rebuilding something as complex as a film emulation, you can strive for accuracy over the complete range at the cost of, say, skin tones. Or you can focus on getting the skin tones correct at the cost of 100% accuracy where it doesn't really matter too much. Which is exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm going to add more red to the midtones and highlights, which is accurate for the skin tone, but not the upper end of the luminance range. And you can see that in the final curves here and it's slightly visible when we wipe our reference still. In testing, this isn't something you would really notice unless your subjects are perfectly monochrome. So now onto rebuilding the color component of the LUT. I'm gonna grab a still of the LUT applied to use as a reference. Then I'm gonna go back to our current rebuild. Then I'm gonna bring over the final curve to make sure that that's as accurate as it can be. Then remove the desaturation node. Play the reference still set to a horizontal wipe, making sure it intersects the colors on the chart. Then create a new node, then into hue versus saturation. Then I dial that in without paying too much attention to the hue or luminance of the colors. Then I move on to hue versus hue. Using a basic chart like this is great in that it allows you to make quick broad strokes, but it doesn't have enough color swatches of varying intensity and luminance to allow us to create a really accurate match. At this stage, we either step up to a more complex chart, or you can move on to working with footage shot in a variety of conditions and use that to continue matching which is exactly what I did for the rebuild. And this is what the final hue versus hue curve looks like. And the final hue versus saturation curve. Next I tackle a differing luminosity in the hues. I created two nodes in an inside outside setup. 
and both set to the YUV color mode. In the first node I'm qualifying the warmer colors, then using the RGB mixer in YUV mode to tweak the luminosity of just that range. Then in the outside node, I also use the RGB mixer with these settings. For an in-depth explanation on how I do this, check out my Brim Linear LUT rebuild video. With the bulk of the rebuild complete, I then wanted to tackle the D55 version of this LUT. The D55 version is the same, except it has a warmer white point. So this is a still of the D55 version. Recreating this warmer white point is actually quite easy. I'm going to add a node right at the end, and then we're going to work with the curves. For better accuracy, I'm going to drop the luma mix down to zero. This stops Resolve from preserving the luminance. So now when I drop individual curves, Resolve doesn't balance the channels, and the image actually gets darker. And this is what the final white point adjustment looks like. Next I noticed that there was a blue bias in the LUT that I hadn't yet added in my rebuild. The easiest way I could recreate this was using curves. And this is what they look like here. And I used a qualifier to limit the colours that it affects. So now I'll show you how I work with this power grade using both Log C and Rec 709 footage. So here is some Log C footage that I shot with the Alexa. I apply the power grade, and lately I've been removing the two Luma nodes. They do give you accuracy, but usually it's not worth it at the cost of stressing the image. Next I'm going to create a node before the power grade, where I'm going to use a color space transform to convert our wide gamut into Rec 709. This is the correct way of doing that transform, rather than pushing saturation to 100. So in the drop down list, select the color space of your footage. Here I'll select Arri Alexa, then select the output color space to Rec 709. And it's usually a good idea to switch on gamut mapping. Then before our transform node, we create our balance node. I pretty much always balance in the wider camera original color space. It always looks more natural, like you've done it in camera. Since it's log footage, I'm gonna use the offset control and I'm gonna warm up the image. Then bring up the saturation of fraction. Then I'm going to drop the highlights. And usually I counter any movement in the offset with the shadow wheel. So pushing it cooler to return the shadows to neutral. So that's a basic workflow that I use when working with this power grade. I think the main benefit of working with a power grade over a LUT is that you can tweak individual components. A lot of people seem to have an issue with the overly contrasty curve present in film emulation LUTs. But since the curve is a separate node, we are actually able to adjust it how we see fit. So I'm going to disable the current curve and create a new node. We could easily draw a custom curve here. Instead, I'm going to go for a standard log C to Rec 709 transform. This should have a lot less contrast than the curve used in the LUT. It's probably sitting a bit bright, so I'm going to drop the offset. And you can see it appears less muddy when compared to our original curve. So now let's work with some Rec 709 footage. This is also shot on the Alexa, but I've already transformed it into Rec 709. Applying the power grade results in an overly contrast image. We can fix this by disabling the curve. If you want to retain some of the filmic contrast, you can actually dial down the gain rather than disabling the node. Next I'll balance in the node prior to the power grade. And I'm going to do this using the lift gamma gain controls, as we're in Rec 709 gamma. I'm going to warm up the image using Gamma and Gain, and add some saturation. And I'm going to add a bit more warmth in the highlights, which is probably pushing it into look territory, rather than a balance. So that's it for the basic workflow and this video. Make sure you grab the power grade, get familiar with it, and then in the next video, we'll finally get onto building a look.